40 acres and a mule. That's right, 40 acres and a mule. After 246 years of slavery, that is what African Americans who had been enslaved were promised by the U.S. government. Well, that was back in 1865, and although that was no real compensation for two and a half centuries of slavery, even that promise was not kept towards black Americans. It became symbolic of all the other promises, laws, programs that were supposed to bring about more economic parity with whites for black Americans, but never took place. Hello, and welcome to Hidden Files. I'm Marzia Hashimi. Today, we're going to take you on a journey that started centuries ago on the African continent and yet still has proportional consequences on millions of African Americans today. Estimates vary from $6 trillion to $60 trillion, the value of those uh, 40 acres and a mule today. Well, the wealth never paid to the former slaves nor their descendants. The generational wealth that was never passed down, that opportunity, like so many others, that was never provided to blacks, while endless opportunities, grants, raises, stipends, etc., were given to white Americans. The results show a staggering difference between black and white wealth, even in America today. In 2019, the median white household was worth $188,200. The median black household held $24,100 in wealth. White households had 7.8 times more wealth than blacks. In 2020, whites made up 60% of the U.S. population, but held 84% of the total household wealth. Black households, who constituted 13.4% of the U.S. population, held 4% of the total household wealth. White households inherit over 5.3 times more than black households. And white households are 2.8 times more likely than black households to inherit any wealth. Well, we're going to dig into this issue further with our first guest, Cam Howard. Cam Howard is a reparations expert who has been fighting for decades to get reparations for black Americans. He has addressed the United Nations and has traveled the world presenting the case for reparations for African Americans. He is an administrator for ENCOBRA, the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America. Thanks so much for being with us. Um, do you think that black Americans should get uh, reparations and if so, why? So I certainly believe that blacks in this country should get reparations. And it's primarily because of you know, two reasons. One, uh, there's never been justice and fairness uh, in any large measure uh, for African Americans, uh, people of African descent in this country. As you know, we came here uh, as stolen kidnaps, uh, people from the continent of Africa to uh, slave in the cotton fields and tobacco fields and rice fields. Uh, in America, and then later in uh, some of the factories uh, during the Industrial Age, um, the tremendous amount of, of, of crimes were committed against us during the period of enslavement. But then after the period of enslavement, we had a brief period called Reconstruction in this country where there was some semblance of fairness and justice. justice. Uh, then, but that was followed by uh, another 80 plus years of terroristic apartheid. Uh, by white supremacist organizations in this country that removed, again, all notions of fairness and justice uh, in the areas of education, in areas of economics, in areas of labor, uh, employment, et cetera. Uh, there was criminal punishment, criminal justice. There's been no fairness. There was no fairness. Uh, it was an apartheid system backed by the terror of the state. And then after uh, the, the Jim Crow period, apartheid period in this country, in uh, 1965 and their 60s, uh, as a result of the Civil Rights Movement, we had a, a small window of, of fairness and justice with the Civil Rights Act, the Fair Housing Act, and the Voting Rights Act that was um, passed. And then in the 70s, we had a semblance of fairness with uh, affirmative action. But all those things were have been stripped down, uh, taking away the, the, the teeth of what should have been given to us in, in, the, in, the, in the area of fairness and justice. Uh, and and uh, they've been awarded down. 
Uh, so when you look at the police violence in our communities, it's still a, a continuation of the non-fair and non-just treatment that we receive in this country. So, you know, only a brief, very brief periods in this country of African Americans ever received the type of fair and just treatment that that immigrants and people who are, you know, uh, other Americans or people who just come to America, they receive uh, just by being on. on uh, uh, within these boundaries, but uh, African Americans as a whole, we have not shared uh, any type of governmental fairness and justice uh, for the long haul. Secondly, uh, reparations are due because of the tremendous injury that we still suffer from today as a result of these hundreds of years, centuries of mistreatment in this country. When you look at uh, every area of people of activity in this country, blacks on the bottom of every good list, on the top of every bad list, uh, whether it's education, whether it's housing, whether it's criminal punishment, whether it's wealth, whether it's you know health, uh, maternal mortality, infant mortality, all these things, you see a stark difference between uh, black lived experience and white lived experiences in this country. Well, what type of reparations are you proposing? We look at reparations in the forms of, uh, from the international law standpoint of gross crimes committed by a state against the civilian population, where it, that tends to lay out what is known as full reparation. It's there's five basic components. First component is cessation and guarantees of non-repetition. First, you must stop the bad acts. You must eliminate the public policy that disproportionately negatively affect people of Africans in this country. That's first and foremost, the criminal justice laws, the housing laws, the economic laws that exist, the uh, disproportionate uh, uh, resource allocation toward education and, and other aspects of our community. First, you must cease those policies and then put in place structures that ensure that those policies don't show up again. Like when enslavement ended, enslavement resurfaced for another 45 years in the form of uh, uh, convict leasing, in the form of sharecropping, in the form of debt peonage, where you know, that we still exist in an enslavement, but it was not called enslavement. So we need to stop these bad policies that exist today and make sure that we put in structures that they don't, don't uh, uh, resurface. The second component of full reparations is restitution. How do you return the people back to where they would have been at these crimes not com committed? So we're talking centuries of crime. So there's gonna be multiple generations of repair that's necessary in the areas of education in the areas of uh, economic development and wealth building and, and employment and these type of areas and land acquisition and housing, all these uh, areas have to be addressed and redressed with targeted resources. The third component is compensation. Uh, when restitution doesn't alleviate a situation, the compensation is an obligatory uh, form of reparations under international norms. And we know, certainly know that uh, in order for us to uh, have some type of parity and wealth in this country, there's gonna to have to be some type of direct compensation. Uh, we don't know what that be and how much it would be, but certainly we are fighting for that because it is, again, obligatory on international law to redress the situation in its entirety. The, third, the fourth component of full reparations is satisfaction. How do you return the dignity back to a people whose dignity was eroded as a result of the crimes you committed against them? Sometimes an apology is, not, is, is it, we'll, we'll do that. Other times, you know, museums, markers, uh, removing a statuary, <laughs> creating monuments, uh, new monuments, uh, curric uh, curriculum overhaul, truth and reconciliation commissions, uh, those type of things uh, uh, lend to uh, dignity uh, uh, return or satisfaction. And then the fifth component is rehabilitation for the mind, heart, and spirit damage to the people as a result of the crimes. Uh, black people in America have the worst health profile uh, among any people. Our health profile is similar to uh, those in quote unquote third world countries uh, in certain areas. Uh, like, uh, the highest rates of cancer, cancer, highest rate of heart attack, highest rates of uh, infant mortality, maternal mortality, as I stated, highest rates of uh, uh, breast cancers among women, the highest rates of testicular cancer or prostate cancer among men. I mean, the, the health profile is, 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 is terrible. And we know now through transgeneration epigenetic inheritance that that health profile is a result of the historical trauma we've experienced as a people in this country. Thank you so much for being with us uh, right here on Hidden Files, Mr. Cam Howard.
we're going to take a look at a few instances that have taken a place over the years and, and why African Americans are demanding reparations. You know, slavery launched modern capitalism and actually turned the United States into the wealthiest country in the world. Looking at this cotton production, I mean, by the 1830s, 77% of U.S. cotton was used for the British textile industry. And look at that, 2.25 billion pounds of cotton in 1859. And you know, the cotton actually built New York City as the commercial and financial center. And if you look at the whole worth after the outbreak of, of uh, the Civil War and the values of slaves, uh, $3 billion, 48% of total wealth in the South in 1860. So very valuable commodity. The emancipation, though, of uh, African Americans did not bring about any type of economic freedom. There were continual policies to make sure that they never got their rights, starting off, of course, with not getting the 40 acres and a mule. However, the slave owners in the South they actually got compensation after the Civil War, $300 per slave loss or freed. And throughout the time, the safety nets for other Americans were never in place for African Americans. Not the loans, not the access to affordable housing in good neighborhoods. There was redlining to prevent them. And even when they could take off a little and be successful in some type of business, as we see like Black Wall Street, then there were efforts to totally eliminate and annihilate any type of success that they had. I mean, this is just a very, very small example of some of the reasons why African Americans are demanding reparations. Kalanji Jamachanga currently serves as co-chair of the Urban Survival and Preparedness Institute and is co-founder of Black Power Media. He has fought on multiple fronts, tackling issues from local and national police brutality cases to international human rights violations. Under Kalonji's direction as founder and national coordinator of the FTP movement, programs such as International Feed the People and the National Coalition to Combat Police Terrorism have matured and developed. He has shared his experiences in the best-selling book, How to Build a People's Army, and the documentary, Organizing is the New Cool. Thank you so much for being with us right here on Hidden Files, Mr. Kolonji Jamachanka. Um, what's your perspective in general regarding reparations? You know, when I think of reparations, you know, most people think reparations is money. That's not what we're talking about. Our first order of operation is our political prisoners. Because like any other civilized nation, Whenever there is war or there's any type of, um, uh, you know, fighting or, or what have you, any type of disagreements, the first thing before anything can go down is they want their captives back. You know what I mean? So we want our political prisoners back first and foremost. And it is my belief that if we are, when it, the question around reparations should also include um, the continent, the continent of Africa. I think that, um, you know, the first thing should be we should be uh, they should be, be paying reparations to folks on the continent because they stole not only the land, not only the, the, the uh, minerals and, 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 you know, the wealth, they stole us. They stole humans, you know. So, um, yeah, we, we totally believe that reparations should be paid. But will it be paid? Uh, we don't believe this country is capable of uh, of, of that type of uh uh, accountability or, or, or respect for us as a whole. What type of reparations in general do you think uh, would be necessary? You know, land is definitely, you know, is, 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 is necessary. You know, we're not just talking about some cash because we know that um, the U.S. dollar doesn't mean anything. And we know that if they gave us rep reparations with cash, then they'll just raise the prices up. They'll hike the prices up. You know, so, you know, that, that's a foolish notion that all we want is, is, is money. You know, we know that the American dollar has no real value across the globe. They place their own value on it. You know, so we don't want anything that they can take away. What we'd really like, like you said, is to be left alone. 
What we really like is to uh, uh, folks to say, you know what, we we want to return these goods. We want to we want to uh, make good with with our people. But we know that under a capitalist society, we know that capitalism is a violent system. You cannot have capitalism without the pain and suffering of others. They package it well. They make you feel comfortable and make you feel like, you know, yes, you should be a part of the capitalist system and you should grow and, you know, everything is going to be all right. But it's not the case. They let a few, uh, quote unquote, African-Americans and a few um, so-called uh, uh, minorities or should we say other oppressed people um, give them the illusion of power. And, you know, power is about self-determination. So if you don't have self-determination and you don't have uh, a place of your own and you don't have your your own uh, tongue and your own culture, then again, you are a displaced person. You are a person that's running around um, trying to find themselves. And that is how they have us right now. So we're talking about 500 years of this practice, this practice of, 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 of terrorism. So we, we must understand that, uh, unfortunately, in this country in particular, when you are, uh, you know, their success has to equal your failure. Someone has to be at the bottom and someone has to be at the top. And in the capitalist system, uh, the folks at the bottom will always get stepped on in order to uh, benefit those who are at the top, the oppressors. In your perspective, what are some of the systemic efforts that have taken place in order to prevent African Americans from achieving equality? The whole notion of equality is a myth because we were brought here as chattel slaves, as surplus labor. Labor. We were brought here as, um, you know, as 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 and, and treated like domesticated animals. You know, so they looked at us as property. They never looked at us as equal. You know, even. In, on, on, on paper, they said we were three-fifths of human beings. They didn't even consider us a human being. Matter of fact, the quote-unquote forefathers of this country, um, they treated us like, 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 like objects. You know, even when you talk about folks like George Washington, these are, you know, most of the, uh, the, the, the men who happen to be on the money here, the, the dollar bills and, and the cash and the coins, these are former slave masters. You know, these are folks who uh, who gave away Africans and, and we don't consider ourselves slaves. We we were enslaved because we weren't slaves when 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 we encountered these folks. So we were enslaved Africans. So, um, you know, so, yeah, so these, these are folks who literally gave us away, uh, George Washington's wife gave Africans away for wedding gifts. It gave us away like we were poodles or like we were some type of plants or some type of exotic uh, uh, horse. You know what I'm saying? Like we were camels. We were treated as uh, nothing more than, uh, you know, like I said, domesticated animals. Like we were, we, we were tricks, we performed for these people. We, uh, we worked for these people. We built for these people. And in turn, we were enslaved, we were tortured. And um, to this very day, we are victims of uh, a systematic oppression, which, again, stems from capitalism and global white supremacy. This is what it's all about. You know, capitalism and enslavement are Siamese twins. We're just about out of time, Mr. Changa, but do you have any final thoughts? I would like to say that uh, people of the world, uh, oppressed people, quote unquote, third world people, we have to resist imperialism at every turn. We have to, uh, you know, like it says in Islam, we have to uh, change things with our hands. And if we can't change it with our hands, we have to speak out against it. And if we don't speak out against it, then we at least have to hate it in our hearts. We have to remember that we are here for a, a limited time. 
and we have the right to exist. We have the right to love. We have the right to be our natural selves. And no man, woman or child should be able to exploit, dominate or oppress us. Very powerful words. Thank you so much uh, for being with us right here on Hidden Files. From 1619, when the first Africans were enslaved in what would become the United States until the present, Africans and their descendants in that country have never been considered as equals with their white counterparts. They have been the victims of systemic terrorism as they have built that country and now they are demanding their fair share of it. Will they get reparations? Will their demands be met? Not likely, but we will continue to follow their story, their cases and their demands for justice. And we'll bring you all the latest on that right here at Hidden Files. And make sure you join me and the team right here next week as we dig into another Hidden File.